Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex and we're doing an island tour today, but this one is very special to me because this island was inspired by my island, Mini Isle. If you missed it, I have a whole playlist for Mini Isle where I ended up abandoning it. It's not even a complete island and it still inspired someone. Everyone shut up. Everyone shut up. This island was created by a member of my Discord server, and she is so talented, by the way. These pictures that I've seen of this island are incredible. But instead of doing, so for Mini Isle, the concept I had was that I wanted an island that was small. So it was going to be mostly water terraforming and just an island big enough to fit all the buildings and everything. So that was the concept for the island. I just wanted a mini island, essentially. And here she has done something similar, but with several tiny islands, which look at this bridge work. This is a master at work. We've got Lilibeth, I think is how you pronounce it. And then Alice, Ursula, Kevin, Maggie, Marshall, Goldie, Cookie, Mary, Gala, and Tutu. Is it Gala? Gala? Anyway, these are super cute villagers, very like spring themed. We've got pink and orange predominantly here on the island and the island itself is a coastal spring core theme. It is in cherry blossom season too. So we have these beautiful cherry blossom petals. Just saw Mary over there. I thought it was really cute. On the way from the uh, resident services to the airport, I ran into these gifts and look how cute they're set up. I almost picked them up on the way, but I wanted you all to see how they were arranged. So let me see what these are and we'll get started. Okay, the different colors are each a separate outfit. So these first five are for the more feminine coded outfit and then this one for the less feminine coded outfit, very cute. So this is my little spring outfit that we're rocking today. I'm obsessed, this is so cute. Anyway, let's get going. So I would call this the main island, the one that Resident Services is on. It's certainly the biggest of the islands. So we start here at Resident Services. The path leads straight down to the airport where we began. And then there are also shops on this part of the island, this big island. Look at this, the little strawberry bag. Oh. How cute. Anyway, so we've got Able Sisters here. I love this setup, by the way. Very spring core. It does have a coastal vibe. The colors and everything just works so well here. Look at this little sign, this little bunny welcome sign. I love it when people use the little pop-up sale tag item. It's so cute. And then behind Able Sisters, we've got Nook's Cranny. Also designed very well. This Nook's Cranny is, I don't know, like... It's so cute. It's got like a bakery element, but it's clearly also a store. We have the magazine rack. We have the boxes, the even the trash back there. Wow, what a what a vibe we've got going on. But it's like a place where you can come and hang out with your friends as well. There's space for seating. I love the mismatched chairs around these tables, all the different food and drink items here. I know from experience it takes forever to get all these different items ready. So kudos to you, Lilibeth. That is so well done. And again, the colors are really speaking to a coastal spring core. I am picking up on the coastal vibes. The flowers too have been really lovely. We've just kind of been walking through them, but they're all super pretty and the color coding is really well done. Look at those little cushions and a chest set. Precious. A lot of community um, elements here on the island. We've also got this little playground, family friendly island. Heck yeah. And then there's this little pergola walkthrough, which is so pretty and the benches to sit around resident services. I think if we go, yeah, this way is the first bridge to lead us to the other islands. And we've got a little picnic set here too. How precious and the little sandals on the ground. Picnic areas really get me going. I think they're so cute. I think it's so funny how we all put our little shoes out and stuff. It's just uh, so Animal Crossing core. Up here is our first baby island and this is, each island has one villager home and the villager homes are decorated if I remember correctly. So we will go in and explore. This is very picnic core. It's like the best part of spring, being able to go out and picnic as long as you don't have, you know, a pollen allergy. Oh, this is Kevin's house. Look at him. He's got a very cute, very clean looking coastal house. He's got a view of the ocean. He has a pet duck. 
Things are looking up for our king. Also, the shower is so cute. It's going directly into the bath, as it should. And he's got, essentially, a little studio apartment. He's got his bedroom. Of course, he has the sloppy bed. That fits him, I think. It's so cute, too. The customization for everything. It's so bright and happy. And I'm just definitely getting those happy spring energies. It's really nice. And although we can't get over there, we can see a lighthouse in the distance. There's stuff to see over there. What a view. So you can appreciate, look at our lighthouse over here. How adorable. I also do love that every little island is connected by bridges. So the villagers can traverse the entire island build. They can go and visit each other. Look, Gala is not Gala. Oh my gosh, what is her name? Maggie, I'm so sorry to Maggie. Maggie is coming to visit Kevin, which is adorable. They're little, they're little pig friends. We'll head over this way. This villager is not home, I don't think. But this is another stunning house. This one has a plant vibe going on. Like this villager seems to own a plant shop, perhaps. Tutu is here. I'm not sure if this is Tutu's house, but very well done. I love all the plants here. Like there's a huge variety going on. And again, it still manages to fit into this cherry blossom springtime theme. Moving this way, oh, Goldie's out and about. It makes me mad when so many villagers are walking around, like go home so I can go visit you, bro. Stop just, stop visiting each other, actually. It's not cute anymore. This is really well done too. We've got a laundry element here. I'm not sure if that'll fit inside the house as well, but very interesting. Also look at the little peach jelly. I wanna be this villager. I wanna go outside and just have a little peach jelly waiting for me. Oh, this is, uh, this is Gala, right? Gala, Gala? It is. Okay, this is her house and she does have a laundry theme inside too. She has her own little laundry area, but again, it's like a little studio apartment. She has her nice little living room area here where she can watch her sea themed snow globe, her water globe. I don't know what those are called. Oh, and look, she has a little scrapbook in the corner. I want to have like a window seat overlooking the ocean, bro. Villagers are so spoiled and we don't talk about it. The wall decor is really cute here. I absolutely love. And then she's got this very calming little bed area kind of secluded away from everything. She's got her books, her accessories. She's thriving. She's also blocking me in. I've never noticed her little flowers ringing around her ear. That is so cute. Like a little lopsided flower crown. Okay, we gotta go. I do love that we're seeing rolls for the villagers so far though. Like Gala's over here with her little laundry outpost. We had the previous villager with their plant shop outside. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so this island is the second largest of this full island build. This is the second largest little mini island. And this is the resident representative's home. So we've got a little double up situation here. We'll see the villagers house first. They have this little deck, which is very cute. A little poolside table, I mean chair. I love this aesthetic. I also love that the opening here allows for a little fishing hole. Like how cute is that? I wouldn't have thought to do that to make a little opening here, but it's so good. Very cute. And there's like fishing gear, of course. Let's go see the villager home. Oh, here's Marshall's house. Marshall's house is not what I would have expected for him, but I love it. This like matte flooring, I feel like I see him as a little, uh, a little fancy, but this is so cute. He's really embracing the tropical life. I love how all the villagers have little outlooks to the sea and it's accurate here because they're all on their own mini islands. So they really would have, you know, an ocean view. Also these little birds, shut up. This is adorable. Again, a studio apartment vibe. He has everything he needs. He has his bathroom, his kitchen, living room, and bedroom, and it's designed so well. The wall decor is super impressive. That's what gets me the most. I struggle with wall decor, so this is stunning. And then we can head right over here to explore the resident representative's home. They still got their mailbox over here, a storage shed, very nifty. Just a lovely calming little deck area, a little porch for them almost. And then behind, they've got a little pottery studio. That's actually so cool. I've never seen like, I've seen pottery areas, of course, but I've never seen all the little like ceramics arranged like that. That's so lovely. 
So the resident representative is a bit of an artist. Oh, this is stunning. The lights are off, so you can really appreciate just the light from the window, the natural daylight coming in. And again, the same ocean accent wall kind of tying the resident representative together with the villagers. That's adorable. The back room is closed off, but we will explore the rest of the house. Oh, this is such a nice bathroom. Imagine having a pool bathtub, bro. Like, everyone calm down. Look how I'm standing. Can I be a little less intense about this? This is cute, though. We do have a little laundry area here, too. We're ironing some socks, but they have fallen off. Maybe had some iron shirts. This is adorable. I really love this room. Also, you can comment if you disagree, because I love to hear about how we see things in the game. But the right room off of the main room was always my bathroom, too. It just, that room has bathroom energy. I can't explain it. It was always the right-hand room that became the bathroom. Ooh, to the left, we've got the kitchen area, kitchen and dining room. I love this, like, cluttered feel. It definitely feels like a coastal home, a very loved coastal home, like a family lives here. You know, it's not like one of the uppity modern ones. It's a cozy one. It's a cozy kitchen. I also love this lamp, the flower one. Oh, so pretty. But yeah, this is adorable. We've got fresh food, uh, some tea, some toast ready. It's adorable. It's great. And again, the lighting, the overhead lighting is off, which we love. And we're just appreciating the natural light and the light from the lamps. It's gorgeous. Ooh, upstairs is like a loft bedroom. How pretty. This is like the bedroom of my girlhood dreams. We've got this little tent play area over here, almost very calming, relaxing, like a little hobby area, complete with snacks, of course, as it should be. And a bear family. I'm just realizing there's a huge bear over here. That's funny. And then over here is the bed with the string lights. Look at them. Lilith does wall decor very well, I think. It's just really, it makes everything feel real and lived in. I love how homey this house feels. Last but not least, we have the basement and the basement is just a storage area. It's accurate to what basements usually are. We just got a lot of clutter down here, a lot of things happening, just enough room to walk through, which is also accurate. Whenever I've had a basement before and my parents always had the same setup, you know, it's enough to walk through, but you're not, it's not an open floor plan anymore. I love how it's kind of categorized too. We've got all this like plant stuff, kind of gardening era going on over here. And then the more tool things over here, the DIY workbench, the tool thing, it's just, yeah. Everything makes sense and adds up, even though it is cluttered and seems like a big random amalgamation. Also, look, they've got a little kitty litter box. That's for Mary. It's also just hitting me that we already saw Mary walking around, which means I absolutely won't see her. Stop, I won't see her house. This island actually has two ways we could go. So we came in from the top left from this bridge. We came from that house over there, Gala's house. Then we could go this way or we could go to the south. I think I'll, I think I'll go this way first. We've got a lovely little picnic aesthetic again. Look, we've got like an apiary over here. Little bee houses, a wasp nest, kind of scary. And then we've got some baked goods out here. Oh, made with honey. There's like a honey theme happening. I see the vibes and look at the little nest. I see, I see. Unfortunately, we cannot go into this house. I don't know whose it is, maybe Mary's, but we are not permitted to go in. This villager is not home. I do love the little Easter egg situation though. The bunny day eggs being featured here. They definitely fit with the spring aesthetic we've got going on. Also, I haven't mentioned it, but I love this pathing the like seashell custom design. I will put any custom designs provided by the creator in the description of the video so you all can check it out. But I love this path. So cute. Again, we've got a little picnic area, some reading and snacks. This is my ideal picnic area. Just a stack of books and some cookies. Give me. Oh, and this villager is a little farmer. They've got their little farm set up, including fruits. They do have an orchard somewhere because look at their little fruit basket and their infused fruit water. This is such a cool item, by the way. Like Nintendo really went all out to make this infused water thing. It's so pretty. Yeah. Good job, Nintendo. Let's go see this villager. Oh, this is Ursula. Again, just a really cluttered but lived in coastal home. 
she's got her little couch like facing outside so she's just watching watching the vibes and it's like this area sectioned off is like a little back porch look at it it has like an outdoor plant and some laundry hanging that's cool i've never thought to do that make the area feel like it was outside that's cool. And then on the other side over here is her bed. I can't get over there because she is guarding the way. She's probably hiding that book. What are the chances that it's like book talk girly material? You know, if you know, you know. But this is adorable. She's got a very cozy little house. And I love how many villagers have these little peach pies. This is the island specialty, I think. So yeah, heading back through her little farm. We'll go down here. Oh, Maggie again. Hi, queen. We have a little flamingo pond over here. How pretty is this? Tutu again. The villagers are trying to keep up with us. We can't go inside here, but they have a very restful, very cozy little outpost here. They're the end of the line this way. There's no bridge linking this to the other islands. You just have to backtrack um, there because I'm pretty sure Lilibeth has hit the, the bridge limit here. So many bridges connecting everyone. Like I said, it is really cute and convenient though, because now the villagers can actually traverse the island and like visit each other. Whereas I feel like it would have been super easy to make these islands off limits for the villagers just by making little hop hop spots, which not gonna lie, I would probably do. Here's Goldie hanging out. We've got a little painting area over here. Oh, this island also has two little areas. So this is the middle island. Like I'll show you, let me show you the map again so you can orient yourself here. But this is the middle island, so we've got an island to the left and to the right, and then we'll have explored all of the little houses, all of the little villager islands. So that's really precious. Again, a villager home we cannot go in. The villagers are just not having me today. They're just not being welcoming. This villager has a little writing set up, though. That's gotta be my favorite, for real. Look at all the books. This villager is just like me. <gasps> Lilibeth is here. All worries fly in the breeze. Wise words. I also love this outfit. Look at how cute she looks. But yeah, we'll head to the left first, past this tiny library. I also, you know, I always just walk by the tiny libraries, but the concept of villagers actually, like, trading books through these is adorable. Like, headcanon, they absolutely do that. We've got a little sewing area over here. I'm assuming they made this bear themselves. And then we've got this cute little deck a nice place for grilling hanging out again we can't go inside because the villagers are haters but very cute and then when they've got a sewing thing over here too they make clothes and little stuffed animals that's what i'm going with then we can head over to the right over here to see the very last villager home <gasps> and they are home oh my gosh i'm glad i saved this one for last so when we can actually go in and explore look at this little i think that's a little hedgehog on the chair that's adorable. Again, the infused water, 12 out of 10 item. And we've got like a little tea party happening here. A little tea party picnic with the stuffed animals. It's giving Alice in Wonderland. Let's go inside. Oh, this is Cookie's home. Cookie, thank you for having us, queen. She's got board games going on. 12 out of 10, this looks like Catan. And puzzles, she's a gamer girl. She's a gamer girl, but not the video games. She's gaming, she's gaming the old fashioned way. I've been in my board game era too. If you have favorite board games, please drop them in the comments. I'd love to see them. My current favorites are uh, Wingspan and Seven Wonders. I think it's really fun. But yeah, this is adorable, so cute. All the villagers have just very cozy, very believably lived in spaces. Like they all feel real. Like I said, Lilibeth is just really good about decoration. So part of this island aesthetic where there are a ton of the little mini islands is that the beaches themselves are inaccessible. So that actually does conclude the areas on the island that we can see, which is kind of funny to think about. Like it's a coastal island, but you can't get to the beaches. It's like each individual island is its own little beach, you know, it works out. Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice this the first time going through. You can see the campsite over there. That's gorgeous. And you see the campsite in a lighthouse, its own little island over there. And there is a campsite visitor, but that's also funny because the campsite visitor has their own little island. They're not traversing this island with the villagers. They have their own little secluded area over there. That's adorable. But yeah, this is great. 
I think this is really well done. The arrangement is really good. It's easy to traverse and everything is accessible, which we love to see. And again, the villagers can traverse the island too. So it just feels very open, very clean. It's a very coastal spring core. I think the creator did such a wonderful job of decorating and creating this this aesthetic. Also now revisiting the flag. I think the island flag is very suitable for this island. Fits very well with the vibes. 12 out of 10. I think this island was absolutely stunning. Thank you so much to my channel members for your continued support. If you are not a channel member and would like to become one, the link is in the description. And thank you, Lilith, for having us today. Your island was so beautiful, just so fun to explore. Thank you again. And I hope you all enjoyed this tour as much as I did. I will see you in the next one. Bye.